just waiting around to give my weather report. My 6.30. I forgot I had some candies in my pocket that my assistant keeper gave me. I'm not quite sure what they are actually. They're a mint, menthol, eucalyptus. I don't normally eat candy, but, and they've been in my pocket for a while. So, why not? So, like I said, just waiting for the weather to come on or the weather report um, for them to call us. It uh, typically is around 6.30, so we're just a couple minutes past, which is not a problem. And it's done on this thing. Looks like a telephone, but we call it the Allen, A-L-N. Do I remember what it stands for? <laughs> no, but we'll see. Just like I said, just waiting for them to call. Then I'm gonna go out and do my rounds. Good morning, entrance is part cloudy, 1-5, west, 0-3 estimate, and rippled. So when I got back from a little mini vacay, if you can call it that, five days off the island is really only three days because it takes, or maybe two and a half, it takes three days of travel time for me to get anywhere there and back. So it's typically one day for me to get off the island and get to where I'm going, which is usually New West. And then it takes me two days to get back because I am... Um, have to you know drive to the ferry take the ferry over to victoria i then stay in a hotel overnight in victoria so that i can be at the base um first thing in the morning uh, to catch a helicopter to get back to to my little island and um why was i telling you this oh i remember because when i got back this was early december when i got back the radio, the Allen, was was down. I guess a big storm came through while I was away and ripped down the whole circuit for that little circuit that you just heard. So there's one, two, three, there's four of us on this circuit of all the different light stations. And it was down for like over a month. And I finally put in a report. I'm like, is there like, you know, this is getting frustrating because I was having to call it in every day on the cell phone, um, all my weathers. And you know, you, you, you kind of live your life by, because you live in isolation. And, you know, I do have my assistant keeper here. And uh, like I said, I do have my assistant keeper here. And we don't always, like, depending on who it is, like, we don't always see each other every day. Sorry, it's early, so I look a little tired. I haven't done anything yet. Um, you kind of start to rely on that lifeline of um, the radio coming on. You get to hear, you know, a voice. You get to hear what's going on at the other stations, which is really cool because I love listening to, you know, what's the weather like at a station that's only like 35 kilometers away or or 15 kilometers away. It's it's it, it changes. It's it's so you know different. So um, it finally came back up and running. So I'm happy now because you kind of like run your day by the Allen coming on and the operators at MCTS um, um, asking you what your weather is. And so it's every three hours 
and um, you can sort of, you know, gauge your day according to that. So now we're gonna go off and do the rounds. Okay, you guys coming with me? Come on. Rosie, come on, come on. Let's go. Who do we have? Oh, Kumar, come on. Come on, Kumar. Rosie, let's go. Oh, there's there's Rosie. Come on, Kumar. Jeez, come on. Can we please go? Come on. I have my light on on my camera, so I think I'm going to turn it off. So here we are, just after 6.30 in the morning. I'm loving the fact that it's getting lighter out in the mornings because normally I have a headlamp on. Oh, watch for sticks that Kumar brings up on shore. Move that later. So I don't need a headlamp. Mind you, it's pretty nice out. So getting a lot of light from the sun coming up. If it was an overcast morning, I might need my headlamp. So let's just go for a walk. This is what I do every morning. Got the ferry over there. Kumar. Isn't that amazing just to be able to wake up to this every day? It's nice and calm right now. Yesterday we were typically at about 30 knots, which is around 60K. Pretty strong, really strong high waves. Four foot moderate, five foot moderate. Weren't, wasn't really outside. There's Kumar, this is my helipad here. So first thing I check is my rain gauge. Let's see. We've got a little bit of rain overnight. So this is checked twice a day, 6.30 at night and 6.30 in the morning. So we've gotten 0.4 mils overnight. It didn't really rain, which is nice. is the Stevenson screen. All that means is I have, now it's really grainy in here, I have two thermometers. I take three readings and um, I'm going to turn this off for now. Looks like half a moon. So let's continue on our walk. Call this the big house or I call it the big house now it's typically what we would call the a PK house but I didn't want to move to this house because I love mine I love my house all the doggies are waiting for me hmm so beautiful So I come down here, check. What the weather waves are like. I have to do my salinity at around 10, but we'll see what the wind's like. Sometimes if it's early and the winds are really bad, because I do my salinity testing off of that. And um, sometimes it's completely a wash and covered by about two feet of water. So we'll continue a little walkabout.
Hey, Rosie. So these are our two diesel tanks. And if it's been raining out, they're contained within what we call a berm. And if it's raining, I have to empty the berm. But we only had, oh my God, 0.4 millimeters overnight. So there's only a little bit of water in there. The reason why we do that is because if something happens to one of the tanks and there's a leak, it's contained within the berm. And uh, so we don't have diesel going into the ocean. But of course you want to let out the water so that if there is a leak, then it's not going to overflow and be in the water. Hey, Kumar, what you doing? Hmm? I don't think there's really, I'll open it. Just a little bit of water, yeah. And the last thing I do on my rounds in the morning is come into the electrical room. So one thing I do check in here in this room, this is our electrical room. And these are for our wind turbines. We have two wind turbines. And one of this wind turbine always wants to trip. And so when it's certain conditions, usually 30 knots and raining, for some reason it'll trip. So even if it's really windy and it tripped overnight, it's not gonna be adding any power to my, um, my power bank here. So, always want to make sure that that has not dripped. If it has, just flip the switch. So you can see a lot of the equipment. This is everything that runs the entire station. And last but not least, come on guys, come on. They like to come in with me. They do my rounds with me every day. This is our generator room. That is our day tank. Coming over to our two diesel engines. So we have two, we alternate them once a month. Right now we're on engine B. So I come in here, check how much load I have on my um, start up in my batteries. So we're at 72.9. So it, I'm going to assume it did not, the generators didn't kick in last night because that's pretty low. They, the generators usually kick in around 65% full. And so the generators are used to top up our um, battery banks and that supplies everything to the entire island. And I record numbers from here. Check my engines. Make sure everything's nice and clean. If the engines are running when I come in or the engine is running, um, I go through a series of different things on here, which um, I then record temp diesel temperature, um, amps that we're using, whatnot. Record the running hours here. And clean up any oil. The engines like to spit. You can see from there. And I just like to clean them up. Okay, and that's gonna conclude my little walk this morning. Hey guys, out.
There she is. Well, if this non-wind holds, maybe I'll get outside today and work on start working on my fencing for my garden because I'm gonna have to start planting seeds soon. So there's a fairy coming in from, let's see, that one's coming in from Tawasson and going into Departure Bay. Hey puppies, what you doing? <laughs> Come on, go play. Go on. Go, 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 go. Those are oyster catchers. It's a calm day, but what you're hearing from the waves is actually the, just from the ferry that's passed by. It takes a while to reach us. And here's my little house. So that, my friends, is a typical morning walkabout. Maybe at another date, I will give you a tour of the whole island. What I do know is this video blog or whatever it is that I'm going to be calling this YouTube channel, I have no idea, is not going to focus on light keeping at all. You'll get some idea of what it's like to live at a lighthouse on a remote island. And really, you know, we do call it remote because the only way to get here is by boat or helicopter. And even though that's Gabriola over there and Nanaimo Harbor, let's see if you can start to see the lights of Nanaimo Harbor over here. Yep. So like I said, the ferry's going into Nanaimo. It is remote. How do you get there? I mean, I'm fortunate. I do have a boat, my own little boat, but I haven't used it since last November and it's now the middle of February. Just realized when I was recording my temperatures that um, tomorrow was Valentine's. Woohoo! So it is remote. We can't get to those places and we get our tender our groceries by helicopter so that's what it's like <laughs>